Zahi, we are talking about having that complete college experience here on Let's Talk Ed. And uh, we alluded to some examples. I gave my example of radio uh, and working at the campus radio station. We'll dive into that a, a little bit more. But, uh, you know, one of the things that, that's really important for students is having a good variety of different clubs, organizations, and activities that they can do when they are on campus? Yes. Uh, I, I don't think there are very many colleges that don't have a student senate and, and things of that nature. But that's not enough, right? Yes, there are a few individuals who'd be interested in such elected type positions, learning the ropes of, of that, even participating in the uh, um, um, board of trustees uh, political and decision making but that's a small segment you know uh, in the trades we see a lot of those clubs you know a welding club an epicurean club a um, the nursing a student nursing association and, and so on which are wonderful but and then the religious uh, clubs, the particular interests, you know, like the chess club, the, the uh, musical uh, club, imp improv club, like, uh, or glee, or, you know, things, things that we all, and of course, there's the, the pure political party type clubs, you know, how many times have we heard that this politician started at their uh, higher education institution to be part of the young Democrats or young Republicans or you know, whatever other political parties are available in our country. But we should, in my opinion, and I, and I want to hear your perspective on this one, it shouldn't just be willy-nilly. We should have some extracurricular outcomes that we are assessing as part of that in order for us to be able to enhance the experiences, but also the learning of those individuals. Right. Well, and I think, you know, part of that goes into you know, a little bit of the planning of, of all of that. And I think that kind of goes into the idea of if you have one person in charge, obviously, uh, you know, all of your clubs and organizations are, are probably going to have somebody from the faculty or staff that is going to be, you know, appointed in some sort of a leadership position in that. But you know, the, the danger is if you are just sort of going out and, and doing this very willy nilly, um, you know, there, there's some question about the sustainability of the club where, you know, maybe right now I have some really, you know, good active members, but then they graduate and then what happens? How do you keep perpetuating that club? And, you know, some of it, too, is the value of the club or organization or whatever to to the students. Um, you know, is it purely about leadership? Maybe. Uh, so, you know, my example with with working at the radio station. So one of the things that attracted me to DePaul when I was looking around was student media was accessible to all students right away. For uh, those who don't I know it, where is the pop? It's in Greencastle, Indiana. Uh, so it's a, a liberal arts private college. And, um, you know, as I looked at other colleges with, with broadcasting programs, I saw some where uh, their campus media, be it radio, TV, or, or whatever, uh, some, you had to be part of that academic program to participate in those. Um, some, you had to earn your way there. So you might not be able to get on the air until you are a junior or a senior. Um, oh. And with, with WGRE at DePaul, what was great about it is it was accessible to any student didn't matter what you were studying, didn't matter what program you were in. Uh, and you had lots of different opportunities. You could be a DJ. You could work in uh, our promotions department. You could work in 
um, the music area. So they were the ones that, that screened and, and chose music that went on the air. You had news, you had sports. So you had all of these different things. And even within that, you had a student leadership structure as well. Uh, so, you know, the people that were, were highly interested in making broadcasting a career uh, tended to be the ones that, that became the leaders within that. Uh, but at the same time, there were the opportunities there. And, you know, yes, it might mean that you get an on-air shift at three o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday, uh, but you still had the opportunity. Uh, so that's something important because, as you mentioned, with, you know, the various trade clubs and stuff, for example, um, for the most part, they are open to people not in those programs. So if you do have that that welding club or, you know, that hospitality club, the restaurant or, or whatever, um, those are generally open to students outside of those programs. But do they know that? And who is responsible for letting people know that, no, if you have an interest in welding, you can join the welding club. You just don't necessarily have to be enrolled as a welding student to join that. Yes, and and that could be great for both types of parties. It could be great for the student who is taking those classes to see somebody from the outside. Perhaps they've got experience. Perhaps they were a welder. They were a nurse at some point in their life, and they can impart wisdom. But also, it's good for the non-affiliated uh, students who's participating in that club because it, it might also excite them about an area that they had little concept of. Um, now, there are more and more of the uh, institutions who are thinking about the rec center as sports and activities and engagement on that more physical level could be attractive to many. That is great. And having those yoga classes, Pilates, soccer activities, basketball, you know, the uh, two-on-two type uh, things are, is wonderful. So intramural sports type activities on top of a rec center is, is f phenomenal. However, how can we take it from just the winning and the losing to learning moments? That is a challenge because some of us want to play just to win, which is, you know, kind of wonderful. But at the same time, why are we are we making a living out of it or are we making a, are we using it as a an expression of our thoughts and as a as a time to to get out of the grind of life? So this is where you talked about a person managing, I think. It doesn't need to be a person. It could very well be. It, it could split a person a million ways, which wouldn't be fair. But an entity with a focus, an absolute, like deliberate focus on growing the members, not just in numbers, but educationally, I mean, their, their spirit as individuals and their citizenry. Well, and, and I think part of it, too, um, you know, and this is, a vague outcome. Uh, you know, it's, it's not that idea that, you know, we're going to make you a better leader or whatnot, but it's that, that spirit of togetherness and institutionally, you know, that that's a big part of why alumni are excited about their institution. It's not solely because when I graduated, I got a job. Yeah, that helps, but people change jobs all the time. You may not be where your career started, but you're also going to look back at that time where, you know, man, I love those days when we were playing flag football together, or, you know, I, I remember fondly all of those practices for jazz band. We bonded over these moments. And I think that's a big part of it because you're 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 creating that that passion for your college. And, you know, that that has been something, especially for two year colleges, that gets lost sometimes because you have two years with the student and 
many will go on and get a degree from somewhere else. And then they, they tend to identify more with their, their terminal institution as opposed to where they got their start. But if you're doing something right. to cultivate that passion at an early time, I, I think that is going to big picture also help with that, that alumni relations as well. And uh, we're, we're starting to run a little bit heavy, but we've been talking about examples of, of different things that you can do uh, on campuses to, to uh, get that complete college experience. If you enjoy our topics, you can subscribe to us here on YouTube. Ring the bell down below. You'll get posted when or you'll get notified when we post new content here on Let's Talk Ed. And of course, you can find us on all of your favorite podcasting platforms as well. So for Dr. Zahi Atala, I'm Chris Ford. We'll see you next time right here on Let's Talk Ed.